for the Globe and Israeli, I'm Bobby Fallett. And I'm Lindsay Hyatt. The Homeless World Cup Foundation estimates that 78 million people are homeless in India, including 11 million children who live on the street. Those numbers are mind-boggling, even more when you consider these numbers are down from the way it was 15 years ago. The homeless situation in India was worse then. Students at the Asian College of Journalism in Chennai, India show us how people there deal with living in the slums. Hello and welcome to the Indian leg of the Global News Relay 2018. We are at Asian College of Journalism. I'm Shreya. And I'm Mike. Four of our reporters went around Chennai looking for stories on shelter and homelessness. Let's have a look. You know what, Shreya, it is like the responsibility of the government, you know, the state government or be it the central government, it is their responsibility to better the lives of their citizens. Yeah, I, I think so too. Like in, in a similar case, in Tamil Nadu, the Slum Clearance Act was made to better the livings of the slum dwellers. But I don't know what the reality is. Well, let's have a look at what Kirtika has to say. Follow me to Nochi Nagar, an area roiled by slum resettlement issues in the South Indian city of Chennai. This is where the city originated a tiny strip of land gifted to the British East India Company to start a factory and a warehouse. There is enough historical evidence that fishing settlements were here before this plant grew into Madras and later modern-day Chennai. Nochikupam, now called Nochinagar, was also a fishing hamlet. The fisher folk have always lived here, that is until 1973, when the Tamil Nadu Slum Clearance Board started building tenements for them to settle in. Located on the bustling Loop Road, Nochi Nagar now houses all the fisher folks and other communities that were living on the seashore of the Marina Beach. The people were originally resettled in tenements made of brick and iron. They are now in a dilapidated condition, yet people continue to inhabit them. They do not have any washrooms attached and have to use a sole public toilet constructed for them on Loop Road. The electricity, even though free, is irregular. Unannounced power cuts are common and they last for hours. The occupants were promised a flat each in the emergency tsunami rehabilitation program buildings next door after the tsunami in 2004. The construction of these buildings was funded by the World Bank. The World Bank, however, withdrew the funds after slum dwellers accused the slum clearance board of allotting flats to people not from Nochinagar. Some of the people living in the ETRP buildings are not allowed to go fishing as they belong to a lower caste. Though they comply, there is also defiance, evidence from the display of renowned anti-caste activists such as Periyar and Ambedkar. The Tamil Nadu government then decided to fund the projects and as a result, 628 flats have been built as against the originally proposed 7,320 tenements using the World Bank funds. The green buildings were built between 2009 and 14 out of the government's funds. The buildings have narrow spaces between them and the compound wall is quite short, lacking secure gates for the complex. The Vrumai still has original houses by some of the residents who refuse to give up their homes for demolition. These families haven't been allotted flats. Sex crime and abuse abound in this area. There are no public schools and hospitals. The people end up paying more than they can afford to, to access private schools and healthcare. Slum resettlement is about improving the quality of lives of people living them. The government needs to put their needs first. So, my young, you know, with the constant climate change, a lot of people are shifting to more renewable uh, source of life where they conserve water, conserve energy, and minimize the wastage of food. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, I totally agree with you on that part. And, uh, you know, our reporter Vishwan Sankaran, he went along with one of the volunteer group who went inside the India's Sadhana forest and uh, they practice their zero waste disposal and uh, you know they have planted more trees and converted an arid ecosystem into a clean renewable one. Let's have a look. Sadhana forest is a community of international volunteers settled near Auroville, Pondicherry. The settlers have one goal to minimize the wastage of food, water and other resources. Forest for the past four weeks. I'm from the United States originally. 
So when you're having Tropicana, think that one day your Tropicana can become a roof. This is recycled Petro Pack. <laughs> What's really interesting is that every task from cooking to cleaning to afforestation is a community activity here. Uh, we are merging trees uh, for reforestation project in Sadana Forest. Um, it's really easy. We just take leaves from the big trees and we will put uh, in small trees in dry areas. <laughs> so yeah, we have a lot of fun. We rake, we collect in the bags, and after we go to some places uh, where small trees we have plenty, need. So all the energy of Sadna Forest comes from the solar panels. This is 11 kilowatt of solar panels here, and uh, we harvest uh, the sunlight, make it into electricity, and support all our activities. And they make sure that nothing goes to waste by following strict protocols for everything from disposing food waste to washing utensils. You'll be amazed to know that there are even protocols for taking a dump. Since its inception in 2003, this man-made forest has had a groundwater level increase of 6 meters and attracts thousands of volunteers each year. The world has watched us for two decades and done nothing. I ain't saying it, these are the words of a Rohingya refugee. Homelessness is an emotional state of being. Now we have Aparna reporting from a refugee camp in Kalambakam, Chennai. It's quite hard to miss this round building at Kalambakam. In this camp, 18 families of 94 individuals stay. They are the Rohingya refugees who fled Myanmar in search of a peaceful place to live. But can any shelter equal home? Each family lives in sections separated by curtains across two floors. But why did they come here? My name is Muhammad Yusuf. My arcane is sticker. They say Nikhil Gaeta, 2012. My to Rohingya, my case is Bangali Bulaga. Is a bad caragana? Unko Marta, Barmaka military rap karata, Bab Kasat, Benko rap karata, Bai Kasat, Mako rap karata. This camp is recognized by the United Nations High Commission for Refugees, which provides them with free education and health care. Yet, the living conditions are poor. There is limited water supply, a common kitchen, and laundry room for all families to share. Poor sanitation and an unclean environment pave way for waterborne diseases. So we asked them one question. Would you like to go back home? Yeah, we have to go back home. 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 We have to go to India. We have to go back home. Our country will be fine, our country will be fine. Well, uh, you know what, Shreya? Mental health illness, it's a huge problem that has gripped the world. In India, it's been increasing at a rapid pace, and you know, like most people, they often like ignore it in a way that, uh, you know, like it's not the regular illness and not many people know about it, and they often tend to ignore it. And I think that's why the Banyan in Trump, Tamil Nadu is providing shelter, is a shelter that takes care of homeless men. Mental health issues in India. The Banyan is a shelter located in the city of Chennai for homeless men with psychological needs. The social workers at Banyan bring in men from the street who suffer from various psychological issues and whose family they are unable to locate. These are men who struggle to find a safe place to sleep or food to survive and those who might have faced harassment or have difficulty in distinguishing between what is reality and what is not. The shelter provides them with proper medication and healthcare facilities to help get them better. The progress made by each client is tracked by the social workers. Each client gets their own box of personal hygiene essentials with their names written on it. As the clients get better, they provide them with vocational and occupational training. Some of the activities they engage in are paper folding, 
bead making, candle making, carpentry, basket decorating and designing, which increases the dynamic engagement and brain function of the residents. The shelter also has a separate room to conduct free tuitions for children from class 1 to 10. The tuitions begin from 6 in the evening and goes on for 3 hours every day. The tuitions are absolutely free and are open for anybody who wishes to come and learn. Currently, they have 34 permanent clients and some who turn up at night looking for a place to sleep and some food. For many, the banyan has become their home and have given them a new direction and hope in life despite having gone through unimaginable struggles in their past. Well, this brings us to the end of the Indian leg of the Global News Relay. Well, I am Mayank. I'm Shreya. And we are signing off from the Asian College of Journalism. See you next year. Namaste. Namaste. We heard from the Asian College of Journalism in Chennai, India. Mike Mohanty joins us from ACJ in Chennai, where it is early evening. Over 36 million people live in poverty, compared with the 135 million in the U.S. and 1.3 billion in India. So we have different housing issues, obviously, but the fact that homelessness is just such an epidemic in both of our regions um, is something I think we need to discuss. Definitely. So, you know, our first question for you, um, basically, like, what is, how did you come about, you know, these stories and figure out, like, you know, these are the biggest problems that your country has? Uh, hi, a very warm good evening. <laughs> so, uh, my friends, my reporters, uh, they went around the city, uh, which is Chennai, uh, southeastern part of uh, India. Uh, they went around the city looking for homelessness, right? Uh, looking for people. And of course, there was this big perceptive issue, which was uh, Rohingya crisis, right? So uh, one of my friend, uh, Vishwam, he another he went around with some volunteers uh, into the Banyan, which is a shelter which uh, kind of provides a different kind of atmosphere, right? Uh, they These are the volunteers who, who went around uh, into Sadhana Forest, right? Uh, there's a forest in uh, Chennai, and uh, they kind of, you know, like uh, they are the volunteers who go around and uh, look for uh, kind of renewable sources of energy. They try for zero waste disposal, right? So they build their houses with the uh, trees and uh, try and uh, reduce all the waste. And uh, yeah. And um, drawing it back to uh, the homelessness subject, what is the what is it like in your region? I mean, are, is it just like a lot of people on the streets? Um, what is it? What does homelessness look like to you? Uh, the basic problem that we have here is that not many people. You know, like India is a huge country, right? And we don't have like we have like more people living in a lesser square kilometers uh, here. So of course we have like a uh, lot of people that didn't have their houses, and uh, when the night falls, they kind of hit the streets, uh, at the bus stations, railway stations. They kind of sit down, uh, kind of on the like uh, the pedestrian. Uh, place where they walk uh, and they find shelter there and kind of sleep through the night and go on their daily wage like they're the daily wage laborers they don't have a home to live in but you know like life has to go on and uh, they just find a place to be right and are there any facilities that um, are there for those people or that they can go to if they need um, housing it, yeah of course I mean when we call, talk about Tamil Nadu government the the south, southern state that I'm that I'm currently in, this state currently has about 50 such facilities for those uh, for 50 such shelters for those uh, homeless people. But then again, it's not enough, and not much care is taken into it. Some of the buildings they are in shambles, and uh, you know, like the government really should do something about it. I mean, you know, it's it's interesting because even though we're so far away, we have a similar problem here. Um, even, I mean, across California, but in our own hometown, um, we have a new initiative that was proposed by our city councilman. Um, and it's, the goal is to get the homeless off of the streets because it's just become such an epidemic in our area. I mean, they're on every corner and um, we just want to help them find housing. And so um, this right. new initiative, um, it, basically uh, finds them for not, um, like gives them the option of 
they can either take a fine or they can be transported to a facility so that they can get that housing. And it would be great if we could see something like that in other countries over the uh, throughout the world. So you know, this this kind of reminds me of the movie The Pursuit of Happiness, right? We had uh, yeah Will Smith going around the place uh, with his baby and uh, kind of looking for his home and uh, yeah all the places were already full like uh, kind of uh, and he didn't have a place to go sometimes they find it the other night it was a completely different story and uh, I feel like uh, when it comes to homelessness a lot lot has to be done because there are people and uh, you know it's again the rich and the poor the class divide but we really need to do something about them and um, yeah, they have the right to dignity, right? The Indian Constitution guarantees that. And it's time, it's high time that we guarantee that. Give them, like, render them. Yeah, you know, one thing over here that actually is, affects the way the homeless and homelessness and the homeless people travel is the weather. Sometimes it gets so hot here. Does the weather in Chennai ever, like, take a toll on the homeless or, like, affect them, you know, not being able to go from one place to the other or making them like and making them have to you know stay in one place and they can't move does the weather ever take an effect on them well uh, my friend uh the problem here is like uh weather in general is something that is not a huge issue right here i mean yeah there is a problem but here the main issue is jobs right most of the people from uh the states up north like uh, be it bihar be it odisha you know they migrate to these places because they know that they can the job is guaranteed. So these are like weather or such instances, though those factors, they don't really matter much because they can bear that thing. They can they they can suffer. But the main thing is that they can provide two meals for their family. I mean some sometimes what happens with those people, the daily wage laborers who kind of are the homeless people, they kind of don't get enough kind of out of whatever work that they do. Even the problem is also like they don't find jobs easily so it's a whole like of a cycle kind of and whether not necessarily it doesn't affect much because you know they've got in them they want to provide meals to their children their family and uh, that is what really is the concern here well, I can tell you're very passionate about this subject we saw that throughout your packages um, and just thank you for sharing them with us well thank you so much the pleasure is all mine all right, we've been talking with Mike Mahanti from ACJ in Chennai, India. We'll be right back after the break. <laughs>